Welcome to yet another Taste Talk. Today we have Sruthi Swaminathan with us yet again to do a culinary demo on a sheet pan bibimbap. So is this kind of like a one, like a one pan deal today? Yes, it is. So I was actually I'm, thinking. I love nice and easy. So yeah, it's it's a one pan thing. But the interesting thing is, I'll give you like a little history of how I came upon this. I'm just trying to pull it up now so I don't reference the wrong thing. Um, so I love Korean food. It's one of my favorite cuisines. It's right up there with Thai, I guess. They're probably my top two. And um, when I, I always enjoyed bibimbap, which is what we're making today, which if you're not familiar, is basically a rice bowl with an assortment of things around it, right? So it's um, a rice bowl with typically made with like cold or day old rice because it just tends to congeal better and kind of hold better. Uh, I'm not doing that now. I'm actually just making rice now because I forgot to make it yesterday, but that's what happens sometimes. Um, and then you have an assortment of things around it. So those things can be vegetables, they could be roasted vegetables, they could be sauteed vegetables, they could be raw vegetables, they could be pickled vegetables. They could also be meats. Um, today's version is going to be a vegetarian bibimbap. So I'm not gonna have any, um, any meats in today's version, but you can easily add a meat here. And you'll see as with a lot of my recipes that I talk about, um, super easy to customize, easy to kind of adapt to what you're in the mood for or what you have in your home or what you feel like eating. So I'm just, I can't see you, Christine. I'm just trying to, okay, there. Um, I'm back. Mm -hmm. oh, is... Okay, so what, that's what we're gonna make is a bibimbap. And what I was looking for here is I was actually inspired to make this because several weeks ago, I was looking at New York Times, um, they're cooking, they have like an NYT cooking bit. And they were talking about this, this guy there, Eric Kim, who I think is a relatively new contributor there. And he's Korean. And he was like, yeah, growing up, I always ate bibimbap, but um, it involves at times kind of prepping each of these ingredients that I mentioned in different ways. So you might have to cook one vegetable one way, pickle another another way and kind of um, do them all separately before you bring them together into this one rice bowl. So what he did is he made them all on a sheet pan. So he was like, can I make this easier by um, doing it on one dish with just a couple side accompaniments that require some additional work? Um, and he did it. And I saw that and I was like, it surely cannot be this easy. And then I was like, I have to try this. And um, Actually, this is the first time that I'm going to be making this. So you guys are going to be try testing it out with me. We love that. Yeah, I've never made it before, so you'll be seeing it now. Um, and so to get started, I'll let you know that, uh, like I said, it's a vegetarian dish, a vegetarian version this time. So I'm going to show you all of the things that I'm going to add into this, which I have chopped and prepared. And um, know that you don't have to use these exact things. This is just an example of the kind of things that you can use. So let me pull this down and show you what I have. Okay, can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay, so what I've set up here is an assortment of veggies. All of these are things that I basically got at the farmer's market this weekend. I just decided to go on a whim and just bought what looked good. And this is what I ended up with. So what you have here is I'll start right here is you have some purple carrots, which I've peeled, but you don't necessarily have to peel them. The reason I peel them is because they had some like roots and stuff coming out of them. And I didn't, I, I just didn't want to deal with that, especially because it's the first time I'm making it. Uh, and then here you have some summer squash, uh, the green and the yellow variety, which they were pretty small. Let me see if I can show them to you. Once I got your pretty small, this size, the biggest ones were like that, and the smaller ones like that. So depending on the size of them, I either just cut them in half or I kind of cut them in quarters lengthwise and then in half again. Um, and then here you have what I'm probably most excited about is oyster mushrooms. So let me show them to you up close. They're beautiful. 
that's shaped like an oyster. Um, and I know mushrooms absorb a lot of water, but this one, I like rinsed it off really quickly. And it, I mean, they, when they say mushrooms are like a sponge, they were not kidding around because it just absorbs so much water. And then I just spend a bunch of time like squeezing it out, but then getting the shape to look nice again, <laughs> and, like <laughs> dabbing it with the dishcloth, et cetera. But yep, these are oyster mushrooms. You can use any kind of mushrooms you like. I also have cremini, but I'm deciding to use just oyster for these. And then here you have two kinds of radishes. So these radishes were pretty big at the farmer's market. So this was actually a purple radish. It was almost the color of this carrot. And when I cut them, it has these little concentric circles in there. It was white, mostly white on the inside. It has some purple. And then I also found these golden ones. You can kind of see the lining in them a little bit. So I'm using two different kinds. I'd, I've actually never tried these golden, or sorry, did I say radishes? Yeah, are I they beets? I meant beets. I did not mean radishes. I meant beets. Sorry about that. That's okay. Two different kinds of beets, um, the purple kind and then the golden kind. I've never tried the golden kind before, so I'm kind of curious to try that. So these are most of the accompaniments that are going to go um, on the rice bowl once they're actually, once it's actually done. In the meantime, so what we're going to do with all these ingredients is, um, it's called sheet pan bibimbap, so that's all we're going to use. So I have a sheet pan that looks like this. Okay. I've had this for I don't know how many years. And what I'm going to do is arrange these veg that I've cut up in kind of their distinct groupings onto the pan. And the reason I'm going to arrange them in these distinct groupings is because when I plate it, I think I talked in my class on, um, on Thursday about like, it might all taste the same, but sometimes it's nice for it to kind of look a certain way, if you're, especially if you're serving it to guests or if you're even eating it for yourself and you want to take a photo of it like I do sometimes. Um, but just for presentation purposes, I don't want to kind of jumble everything together and cook it. Also, because I have some lighter colored and some darker colored things in here. I don't want the colors to kind of muddle together and get kind of like muddy, I guess. You know, I want them to kind of stay pretty bright and fresh. So I'm gonna um, point these down again and show you what I'm gonna do here. So here's the sheet pan. First thing I'm just gonna drizzle. I'm not gonna put any foil or parchment or anything on here for this because we're, gonna, we're roasting. And in this case, I really want it to make contact with this pan. I'm just gonna kind of drizzle a little bit of oil. And then I'm gonna take a brush. You'll see we're gonna coat kind of the vegetables in that too, so we may not always need it. I'm just gonna kind of coat it this way. So we have minimal sticking. And keep in mind, it's the first time I'm doing this, so we will see. <laughs> if this is in fact the ideal method <laughs> to make this. Okay, um, then I'm just gonna kind of put my vegetables in here. So first I'm just gonna put in the beets. And when you put them on here, you wanna make sure you're not overlapping them too much um, just because you don't want to, um, crowd the pan, in which case they're gonna end up steaming instead of roasting. So here's those, here's these. And I'm just trying not to pile them on top of each other. And then we're gonna put some carrots right here. And we're gonna salt and pepper these and toss them a little, so. Too much. And you know, these beets, they were like purple on the outside. So then I was like, wait, how are they gonna look on the inside? So and it turned out they were mostly white. Um, okay. And then I'm gonna put the squash in. The green. And we also have yellow. As usual, I'm like overdoing it with the mushrooms, which for me means it's just right because I love mushrooms. And in this case, I'm looking for the mushrooms to provide a um, little bit of that. I don't really care too much to have a meaty flavor, but more to have some um, something a little more substantial in there. 
So that's why I chose these. So I'm just gonna place these right here. I actually have like double this amount of mushrooms, but I may not get to put them all in here at once. I might just save those. Okay, so do you guys see that? Just yeah. everything is arranged on there. Um, oh, oops, just this couple pieces of this. So now I'm just gonna grab some salt and pepper and I'm gonna salt and pepper all of these. Any questions so far? Did you get everything from the farmer's market? I did. I love that. I did. Um, I do want to try doing that this summer, especially because like, well, one, it gets me out of the house early in the morning. Because mm -hmm. if you go past a certain time, like all the good stuff is gone. Yeah. And two, um, yeah, I just want to try and make it because I, I do get stuck in kind of the same things that I like to eat all the time. And so this allows me to do something a little different. Season liberally with salt. <laughs> Quick check that I wasn't using sugar instead of salt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely do. important to check that. I mean, I've done that before, so just a little light drizzle on top. And that's really it for the seasonings. You know, in the past, I've not when making this, but when making other things, like I'll add a lot of like extra um, aromatics and herbs and mm -hmm. spices and all of that. But you don't really have to do that here. Um, so you are looking a little bit for the flavor of these vegetables to come in. And I will say maybe if I hadn't gotten these at the farmer's market or I didn't know they were you know, walked three days ago or something like that, I would try to dress them up a little more. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like maybe I would try to be like, oh, these don't taste good on their own. So I want to try to, you know, help them out a little bit. But that is not the case here. So, you know, like I do want to taste these vegetables. So let's see how that goes. One little carrot. Okay. And then. Wait, you know what, Christine? Guys, yeah. I'm glad this is reported because now I'll never forget. These are radishes. They are radishes? They've got they that, are. that bite? Oh. No, <laughs> I just tried it. I was like, this is a radish. Okay. This is why I should go to the farmer's market more and not just rely on traditional colors and sizes of things that I find at the grocery store because they don't always match what happens in real life. Um, this, it's always a great idea to talk great. with your, um, with the farmers at the farmer's market to mm -hmm. understand what they have. And they always have great recommendations on how to prepare things that you've never worked with before. Um, oh. Always such great advice from them. So, yeah. I mean, and they know exactly what's going on because they grew it, right? And yeah. they know when they <laughs> harvested it and everything. Oh, hi, Zane. Um, <laughs> Okay, so now I'm just gonna, I've had an oven preheated to like 425. So I'm just gonna pop this in the oven. And while that's cooking, we are going to, um, we're going to kind of make the rest of the stuff. So let me put this in. So someone asked if there are baby radishes. I'm like, oh no, those radishes are pretty mom and pop size. Oh, so they're really they're big. Giant. So yeah, let me let me show them to you right like they look like that yeah i mean i would think that was a a beat but that's wow it's radishes so my brother-in-law was over yesterday and he was like are you sure these are like they seem so big they are they they're just giant i've never seen them like this um okay so that's gonna be in the oven for about like 30 ish minutes hi yara um so the, the thing I would say about putting those vegetables in there is, yes, it's great that it's one pan and it's great that it's easy cleanup and, and all of that. But the one risk is because you're putting in vegetables there that all have like different densities and kind of um, textures, 
you could say, well, are some of them going to cook at a different time? Like, am I going to burn something by the time something else cooks? So I will actually send Christine, I might have sent it in my initial one, but I'll send you Eric Kim, who this is like inspired by his initial recipe, where what he does is he actually does, puts things on there like kale, you know, and he uses sweet potato. And he's so obviously like sweet potato and kale are cooking at different times. So in that case, you kind of want to, if you are including a leafy green in there, you want to add that in a little bit later on in the cooking process so that one isn't burning by the time one of them's like finishing up cooking. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and then similarly with the mushrooms, TBD, how that's gonna go, right? So we'll see because they're, they're very different um, kind of firmness than the other ones. But with the radishes, this is where I wanted to make sure I sliced them pretty thin. So if you see, like I peeled one, I'll show it to you. Here's like the golden one that I peeled, right? Mm -hmm. So I cut this in quarters and put that in there. It's gonna be hard to get that to cook at the same rate as some of the other things. But if you just cut them a little bit thinner, you're helping that process, um, helping that process along a little bit. Okay, so now we're gonna get started. There's a couple of other things we wanna do. One of them is, aside from all of this stuff, oh, hi, Zane. <laughs> aside from all of the things, um, on the sheet pan, we are going to add some things in at the very end, right? So one of them is onions. And what I like to do, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, I wanted to ask you one question. So someone was asking, can you take some of the items that if you see that they're already done, can you remove them from the pan? Yeah, you can remove the them. Um, yes, you can remove them from the pan. I just tend to forget stuff like that so like I just you know if I have it out in front of me and I can see it then I know it has to go in but if it's already in there I'm not gonna remember to take yeah, it out you'll forget to take it out it's probably yeah. gonna I I would have that same issue too yeah and well actually you'll see this is probably one of my favorite things that I learned from this that I'll, I'll do in a little bit to kind of finish out before I do that um the bowl it has all of these roasted veggies right but I'm a big fan of having things in different textures in that bowl. And while the veggies themselves will contribute to that because they're all different, I also want to have uh, something pickled. So radishes are great for pickling. Um, cucumbers are great for pickling, but I'm going to pickle onions, right? So I've already cut them up. They're just in this bowl here. And what I'm going to do is add some, add some apple cider vinegar to them. So if you don't have apple cider vinegar, you can use regular vinegar, um, just something acidic. So I just got this, I use this here. And this is a way to kind of quick pickle things. So if you don't have hours and hours or days and days to do it, this is a way to kind of quickly pickle it in like 20 minutes. So I'm just gonna fill this up enough. And this will settle a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is add some sugar to this as well. Okay. Sugar. Sugar. There you go. Okay. Make sure you put that lid right back on there. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, that's a good point. Yes. And then I'm just going to use a pork to just kind of process it. I know it seems like not all of it is immersed, but it will. As the um, acid kind of does its job, the onions are gonna get a little bit softened and they'll kind of settle into it. So kind of gonna do this and then just set it aside, right? And you wanna do this, you could even have done it before you set up the tray with all the veggies, but I wanted to get that in the oven. But once you do this, you can just kind of set it aside and that's all there is to it. And you'll see towards the end, uh, the onions will soften, but also that very sharp onion flavor will be gone. So someone asked if rice wine vinegar would be okay too. I don't see, yeah, uh, yeah. I think yeah. pretty much any kind of vinegar that maybe the, probably not balsamic, you're not going to want to do a quick pickle in your nice balsamic, um, mm -hmm. but more of your like your apple cider, your rice wines, your white vinegar, some of your more, um, you know, cost-effective vinegar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I got this like in bulk, right? So yeah. that, that's always great. And then um, 
Also, oh, oh, I, let's go to the park. No, we're not going to the park now, Zane. Okay. <laughs> he came back and was like, let's go to the park. Are you guys going to the park? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye, Zane. Have, Have fun. fun. Okay, come here. Come here. You can say hi to everybody. Here's Zane. He's back from school. Have fun at the park, Zane. Okay. All right. That's okay. Go have fun. Okay. Are you taking your scooter? Huh. Yeah. Okay. Go take it. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I think I just gave him the idea to take his scooter. I don't think that was part of the plan. I was like, oh, are you taking your scooter? Okay. Anyways, um, what's I doing? Yes. Are so quick hands pickling. are pickling. Huh? You're quick pickling. Yes, I'm quick pickling the veg are in the oven. And now I'm going to make my sauce. Right. So another nice thing about this is, yes, it's a one pan meal, but also I like that you can do some things while other things are like taking care of themselves, right? Like if it's something where you have to tend to it constantly, then it becomes a little more chaotic to be like, to cook how I normally do, which is start something and then do something in the meantime and then add it when it's time. But this is less chaotic because I did all the chopping before I came on the call today. Right. So, um, here to get the sauce started, all I have in here is my favorite thing, chopped garlic. I don't have you guys watching me peel and chop it this time as I do every other time. <laughs> um, and then the sauce itself is really simple. So the first thing you're gonna want is gochujang, which is a hot pepper, it's like a Korean hot pepper paste. I have this giant tub of it. It used to be you could only find it uh, either online or in like specialty Asian stores, but you can find this at your local store now in the international aisle. So exactly, yeah, it's a hot pepper paste. It looks like this inside. It looks like very thick ketchup, I guess. Does not taste like ketchup. Not and at it's, all. Uh, what was that? It does not taste like ketchup at all. No, no, it's spicy. It's like pungent. It's um. I don't know exactly how to describe it, but it's, I'll, I'll send you a link. I'm like getting bad at describing these now. I almost want to taste it a little, but I know I'm not, I'm going to regret it because it doesn't taste great just on its own. So we're going to make a sauce that's a gochujang sauce. First thing we put in there is some minced garlic. You can also grate it in there if you don't like getting those little bits of garlic in your mouth because it is raw garlic. And then, see that? Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to add in here is a little bit of soy sauce. So I happen to have light soy here. So I do like dark soy for some applications, but it does have a stronger flavor and it alters the color of what you're making quite a bit. Not that it matters here because you're going to have this dark red paste and um, it wouldn't matter too much, but I like to add the light soy when I want the flavor, but not necessarily uh, too much of the color. So here I'm gonna add a little bit of it. Let's see. About that. We'll of course taste it at the end and adjust as needed. So we have the garlic, we have the soy sauce. We're also gonna add some sesame oil. You can smell that already. Not too much of the sesame oil, just because it can overwhelm. Um, the sauce sometimes, it's a pretty strong flavor. And then we're also going to add some honey, which I don't know if this is traditional or not, but I like to have a little bit of sweetness in there. And then the last thing we're gonna add in here is someone was asking earlier about, um, I think you're asking about rice vinegar. I'm gonna add just like a dash of that. And then I'm just gonna mix this up. Well, I'm mixing it up now because we're going to add the gochujang and that's super thick and I just want to make sure the honey dissolves in here first. Any questions? No, I think we're good right now. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking as I was getting ready for this, um, how varied these <laughs> recipes are that I'm showing you because the thing I showed on Thursday was literally like a salad that required no cooking and here there's you know multiple steps to this. Okay, so, so 
That's why sometimes I have like a, another set kind of ready to emulate the magic of TV, but other times I'm like, no, nope, it's just gonna go in the oven. Um, okay, so I'm gonna add some gochujang to this. I think all the exact amounts are in the recipe. This up. You see how thick that is? So a lot of times when you go to Korean restaurants, uh, they will give you like, and you're eating bibimbap, I see this mixing that up. Um, when you go to a Korean restaurant, they will give you um, gochujang and you kind of choose how much you want to add into your plate or into your bowl. And while that's fine, I do like this um, thinned out version of it because then the gochujang doesn't overwhelm the rest of the bibimbap. Is it very spicy hot? It is, but like there are hotter, my aunt's asking this, there are hotter like Indian things. I guess. Like there's, there's hotter like Indian chilies and there's hotter Indian dishes. It's more getting used to the, like the pungency of it. It's not like horseradish, but it does have a very specific. Doesn't it flavor. have like, isn't there a fermentation step in the process yeah. of making that? So it's a little bit different. Yeah, it's almost like way more concentrated or mm -hmm. something like if someone knows how to just exactly describe what that's like uh i'm happy to steal the explanation for future times that i make this but okay so you see it's i'm still mixing it right it's still not um getting settled in but once i get all these lumps out of here i will give a quick taste test just to see if it needs any more honey or rice vinegar or uh or soy sauce so, or honey, or did I say honey? Yeah. Okay, so let's give it a taste. It's really spicy. It's very good. We need some honey. I'm gonna add it, but it's again to taste, right? Like, yeah. This is why when I find, so I used to have a food lot for many, many, many years, right? That I started in like 2011. And what I found then, what I found hard then, which is still what I find hard now, is giving exact amounts for anything. Okay, maybe it's because it's not how I usually cook, but then I also recognize that if I watch someone make something and I wanna get it to taste how they got it to taste, like I wanna kind of know the amounts, you know? I guess for cooking, I'm just not, I'm not disciplined in that way. I, you're not committal. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree. Okay, so this looks great. You see that? It's like pretty thick, but that's how you want it to be. And this may not look like a lot of sauce, or I don't know, maybe it looks like a lot of sauce to you, but when you put it on the actual, in the actual bowl, um, you don't need a lot of it. You know, mm -hmm. like adding a tablespoon of this is probably gonna be plenty. So just keep that in mind. And then if you make too much of it, all of this stuff can sit in the fridge. You know, the gochujang's in the fridge. There's nothing in here that just because you made the sauce this way, it's gonna go bad super fast. The only thing is the raw garlic. So if you make the sauce, I would try to use it up in like four to five days and it should be okay. Okay. All right, here's the sauce. So that's ready. Would you do the sauce? Um, is the sauce to be served room temp, cold or warm when you eat the dish and assemble everything? Oh man, I don't know. I, I would just say room temperature. Yeah. I, cold because like you're making everything else you're going through you're going through the effort of like making everything else warm and i don't like to have i like to have bibimbap when it's like nice and hot and toasty uh so i wouldn't want this to be cold the only i guess cold thing that could be in there which i've taken out so hopefully it's fine the is some kimchi yeah which will add at the very end once it's all done so all right, so I'm going to take a quick look at how the veggies are doing. And then I'll let you know. Hang on. Okay, 
they look great. Um, I'm going to just <laughs> rotate the pan. You're going to have to trust you. You're going to have to wait till you're going to put them all done. Yeah. to the farmer's market it's also making me be like man what stuff what vegetables do i need to cook in order to eat them you know i'm so used to just any vegetable i have like cook it in some way except if it's in a salad i guess and i don't very often eat raw vegetables but getting this stuff like i even tried that carrot earlier and it was sweet i'm not used to them being sweet you know, but maybe that's how they should taste. So, yeah, we just got a question. Are the veggies going to like caramelize or is it best to have them more like crispy? I would like them to be a little crispy. I just like that texture. But again, because of the different things we put in there at the same time, you might naturally just end up with some that are a little softer and some that are just a little bit more crispy. Right, so it- Yeah, it's gonna be like a variety of textures. Mm -hmm. oh. And in this case, that really works. So usually when I put things in the oven, I'm always like, okay, I need to cut them all about the same size. I need to um, mix them all up really well together in case certain parts of the pan get hot in the oven or the oven doesn't uh, heat up evenly, et cetera. But in this case, I welcome that difference in texture. And I'm not worried about something I don't know, being slightly undercooked or something, right? Like I've cut everything pretty thin and the vegetables are pretty fresh. And so when they go, I know that they'll taste good regardless of whether uh, they're all cooked to, you know, some ideal uh, level of like tenderness, I guess. So while it's in there, I'm gonna give that about another five to six minutes or so. And in the meantime, I wanna talk about options for how to make this like a non-veg, non-vegetarian type thing, right? So this is obviously vegetarian. I've made non-vegetarian versions of bibimbap, just not on a sheet pan like this. So some of my favorite things to add are, uh, I have added ground beef. That's maybe my, my favorite and how it's turned out, especially if you cook the beef where like it gets a little bit crispy too, because that also adds to the texture and then contrasting that with how soft the rice is and the veggies is a really nice, um, nice experience. Another one is with chicken. Like I've made it with just little cubes of chicken that I marinated overnight in a sauce similar to this. So that way you're allowing the flavors to kind of get into the chicken. And then I also will sometimes put like a little lemon in there. And then when you just sear it or saute the chicken the next day and then put it in, that's an extra step. Yes, similar to what I said before about how all of the ingredients need to be done differently sometimes, cooked separately. But this is a way to kind of add protein to it. If you don't wanna eat meat, those are the two things I've tried that I've really enjoyed is ground beef and chicken. If you're vegetarian and you wanna add some kind of like meat substitute, Here's what I actually like. I'm not a vegan. Is there a question? Could you, could you do like tofu or like a hard cheese or paneer? Yeah. So actually in the recipe that I sent um, at the bottom, I kind of listed like options and tofu and paneer were a couple of things I said. So if you even want to like <clears throat> sear the tofu, I would just say make sure to kind of uh, get all of the water out of there, uh, even by like putting a cloth on it and then placing something heavy on it. And I usually don't take the time to do that, but then that also means that I never end up with perfectly crispy tofu, right? So if you want that, you gotta go through that extra step. Uh, you can also, but in this case, if you like mushrooms, like if you, you'll see how many mushrooms I had cut up. So it's like overexcited about that. Um, if you like the taste of mushrooms and the texture of mushrooms, that will provide that kind of like I don't want to say meaty because I when it, like the goal is not to always be meaty, right? The goal is not always to have something. Oh, good, Zoe's trying impossible meat. Great, yeah. He was telling me yesterday he's gonna try that. Um, yeah, you can try that. And what I sometimes will try is this. It's called yeah, this vegan chicken. chicken. 
And I don't typically like the meat substitutes. I, yeah, Impossible and Beyond have some good things, but usually I feel like they're just either trying too hard or like, why do you need this? But this is a um, seitan and it's it's wheat. So if you're allergic to that, you can't have it. But it just come, I got it at H Mart. Um, and you can definitely just chop this up, uh, cook it up in a, in a pan really quick, maybe with a sauce like this, maybe with some ginger, garlic, and scallions. David's and asking about ground veal or pork. I think I'm you sure. can do anything it? with this. Absolutely. What was that? I mean, he asked for about ground veal or pork, but you can really do any kind of protein with this. Yeah, you can do any protein. I just don't eat veal and I very, very rarely eat pork. So um, I have it, but I'm, I'm sure you could do that. If you go to these Korean restaurants, like a lot of times they'll have it, have it cooked a very specific style, like a, it's called like a bulgogi beef or like a bulgogi chicken. And it's that marinade. And that's, I guess, a very classic like Korean flavor or Korean way mm -hmm. to do it. Um, I haven't tried making it that way. I'm sure I could, uh, I could test it out. But often I'm so like caught up in all these other things I'm doing for the bibimbap that I'm not thinking about how to prep that in some classic bulgogi way. But again, maybe if I'm going to be like making it on a sheet pan and having time to just sit here and like talk to you guys, then maybe I have time to do that. Um, okay, last thing, we're, well, not really last. <laughs> There's still some more steps. <laughs> but one thing we're going to do now is, so you see here, I have another sheet pan, right? So this is actually the mini sheet pan from my toaster oven, which I have used to demonstrate entire meals for you before. <laughs> Right? So what I'm going to do is the vegetables are almost done. And remember before I was saying like, hey, if you have things that are going to cook at different rates and you're worried that it's going to burn, don't add it all the way at the beginning. So I'm not going to add more vegetables now, but what I am going to do is cook a couple of eggs in the oven while the vegetables are still going. So show you this. Again, first time I'm doing this, we will see how this goes. Maiden voyage. Yeah. I mean, if this works out and becomes a staple, like I can always go back and see how I did it. I don't need any other way to document. Okay, oiled that. Okay, let's see what shape the, oh. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, a little bit like, oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. I'll take it. Okay. Then I'm going to crack another one in here. Just like that. So I've cooked eggs in the oven before, but it's usually in the form of like a frittata. Or yeah, a or like a quiche. Or yeah. A and quiche 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 quiche. yeah, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this put it in the oven for like three to four minutes. And then just cross my fingers that it comes out that perfect consistency where like the whites are set and the yellows are just like, well, runny, yeah. <laughs> like, like, you know, that perfect texture that I like. So I'm gonna put this in the oven and then if the veg are done, I'm actually gonna take them out and I'll show them to you. Excuse me, excuse me, Yara. Thank you. Excuse me, very hot. Okay, so it looks like the veg might be done. It's going to set a little thing here. What was your oven temperature again? 425? Yeah, 425. But then each oven's so different. And then like every time you open it, it releases a bunch of heat. So if you need to go above, if you want to go to like 435, 440, it's probably fine. Pro tip, make sure you have um, a thermometer in your oven so that you can see if it's actually calibrated properly when you're cooking, so keep the oven the same for the eggs. You're not changing that temp. Yeah. I'm just keeping it, but I'm just going to, well, I can see it. I left the light on so I can just keep it. your eye on it. <laughs> this is so funny. So <laughs> you know when I like put everything on here and I was like, oh, there's no room to like, everything just shrinks down, right? Cause all the water is coming out of it. Everything just shrinks down and you'll see how much space is left on this now. And the different stages of doneness for all these. Some of them definitely 
little crispier than I would like, but that's what I have extra beets for. Let me show this to you without burning myself. Okay. I think I've burnt myself on these videos like a few times, so I'm trying to be careful. Be cool about it, yeah. Okay, so here are the veg, right? Can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay. So we have the radishes here. Like this is obviously not what you want. No, you can see that? Okay. So that means that piece is too, because the other ones seem pretty okay. So it probably means that piece was too small slash too thin. This seems like the right temperature and amount of time for the squash, both the yellow and the green. Carrots, carrots look, look good. good. Yeah, carrots look good. And actually, I love the mushrooms like this. Like they're nice and crispy. So now I know if I want them to be a little chewier, then I can just either put them in a little later or take them out a little sooner, right? And I, like I said, I still have all these mushrooms. So you better believe that right after this, I'm gonna be testing out what happens when I put it in for different amounts. So we time. have someone asking when you should be cooking the rice. Yeah, so the, <laughs> this is what I did. Like in the, in the um, recipe that I sent you, I was like, I was like one cup cooked rice as if everyone just like has that sitting around. Um, but yeah, I, let me show you this. We're in our household, we are rice cooker people. So it's always like, oh, there needs to be rice throw it in the rice cooker and go, so. Oh, that's really good. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna show you something. I do have a rice cooker. I have like an electric rice cooker. I almost never use it. When I went to college, my mom got me this. It's this like plastic rice cooker, I get like, I don't know what. And so I just make rice in this and I mean, if you're a rice snob, you might be like, you know, that's not really the way to like make, yeah, but like it cooks it just fine. You don't need any fancy equipment. You don't need any like anything. You can just put your rice in here. You can put your water in here, 12 minutes in the microwave and you have perfectly fluffy rice. Look at that. I love it. <laughs> I, it's like way easier. This is what I do. I use things like my microwave and my toaster oven there's nothing there wrong with it. Oh, so now I'm going to show you what bowl should be used for this. I need like a wider bowl so I can just like put all the ingredients around the outside. You know what? I'm just going to use this. So when you use your rice cooker there, Sruthi, do you get yeah. the crusty rice on the bottom or not? No. So one of the things, um, if you look at that original recipe that, uh, that I was referring to in the New York Times cooking, what he does is he takes rice and then at the very end, he'll kind of cook it on the sheet pan. So what he'll do is when there's like five minutes remaining, right when he puts the eggs in, he'll kind of move the vegetables to one side, spread the rice out on one side and just put it in the oven for like five minutes so that the underside of it gets a little bit crispy. So if you want that little bit of crispiness, that's the way to do it, right? I'm not doing that today because I was like, I don't know how the eggs are gonna turn out and how these are gonna turn out, but I might try that the next time. Speaking of the eggs, I'm gonna take them out and then we're gonna assemble all of this. <laughs> this is so funny, guys, look at this. It's like a is sheet it like of a yeah. <laughs> How did he get it to just like, so he made it and they just stayed in little perfect egg shapes. So I don't know how he did that, but you know what? We're I kind of like, like your rectangle of eggs though. No, they <laughs> never made rectangle eggs before. I can, like, you fold them underneath. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut them out in a circle. And then mm -hmm. no one is going to know. And then they're going to think they're beautiful. These are like avant-garde eggs or something like that. So yeah, yeah, you guys are right. They, they, uh, they're, he's using molds in order to do that. And someone asked, can you, po can you poach the eggs? I mean, do the eggs the way you like. Oh my God, you could do anything. Yeah, you can have a personal you preference on the way yeah. they're made. 
Yeah. So I just happen to like them like be a little bit runny, which I know these still are, even though they're rectangular. Okay, here's the rice. Yeah, and if you have like colder, this is where you're asking about the temperature. If you have like colder or room temperature rice, or at least rice that's a day old that you can warm up a little bit, that'll probably work great. But here I purposely made this rice with a little lower water to rice ratio than I would so that it's not soggy and it's not like super clumpy in some way. Like this is the right consistency that I want. But I best bet this would be even better tomorrow when I use this rice in terms of the texture of the rice. Okay, so let me show you this. How are we doing on time? Uh, okay. 517. Great, okay. So here's the rice. I'm just gonna put a little bit in here so I can show you what it would look like. More. Now we're gonna assemble everything on here. So let's try. Aside from these like very blackened radish chips, the other ones are actually quite, they're a little bit like chewy on the inside. So I love like that color. Like that's what I want mine to get to. Mm -hmm. But if you want yours to even get to that state, you could cut them a little bit thicker. You know, and if you cut them thicker, they'll take longer to cook. And then um, we'll have a slightly different texture. Okay, here's some of the green squash. To put some of the yellow squash in here. I'm gonna have to like take a pic of this and send it to you after, Christine. But that, try that. Man, and the squash is really good. Okay. Here are the carrots. I kind of just want to snack on these now. I get everything. Oh no, the mushroom. Look at that. Oh like That's really good. Almost like little chips. I'm going to break them apart like that. And it's nice, they like kind of maintain their shape a little bit too. Okay. So here's this bowl. Looks like that. And now <laughs> I'm gonna cut out little circles out of my eggs. And then I'm gonna add these perfect eggs, perfectly like round eggs on here. Okay. Oh, at least they're not stuck to the bottom. Thank God. Okay, that would be just. Yeah, that would be a hiccup. Yeah, Christine's like, yeah, I wouldn't even post this video if that was the case. <laughs> Oh, maybe we're gonna have rectangular eggs after all. Here we go. They're fun though. Look at that. I like it. Then you're gonna put the rectangular egg on top, just like that. And I like this, because for me, the best part of this beef mop is the mushrooms. And it's like a nice little surprise under the eggs. Okay. And then you move this out of the way so I can show you. We're not done yet. We are going to add a couple more things. So I'm a fan of like color. Here we have some scallions that I've just diced up. Okay. And then we're also going to add a couple more things. Um, the gochujang sauce from before. So I'm gonna actually just put it off to the side um, instead of putting it on top of the eggs. I'm just gonna, knowing that you can always add some more if you want. And we're going to remember these, like the pickled onions. Yes, so we're gonna add. So for the rice, is is should it be basmati? Should it be jasmine? Is there a specific rice you oh, would yeah. recommend, or any kind of rice? I have been eating exclusively jasmine rice uh, for several months now. The basmati rice, it's like how do I describe the word for it in like Tamil? It's too like 
they come apart individually. Oh, I'm forgetting the word for it, but it, it, they almost like come apart too easily. They separate. Mm -hmm. They don't, yeah, they're, they're very independent of each other instead of like grouping together yeah. like friends. Yeah, they're very like independent women. And then the Jasmine Rice is a little more like, I'm gonna stick with like, like a pack of people. It's like squad goals. <laughs> right, squad <laughs> goals. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna add, oh, you guys can't see that. Let me show this to you. You see this? I just added a little bit of the onion in here. Mm -hmm draining this or anything because whatever I don't finish today I'll keep it in tomorrow but I also don't want to be like pouring over apple cider vinegar and it might be well. okay so we have this and then last but not least we are going to add in some kimchi I don't know if anyone's ever tried to make their own kimchi at home I'm pretty sure it's a like cabbage yeah, it says cabbage. Oh, it actually has carrots. It says cabbage, carrots, green onions, salt, peppers, red peppers, crushed red pepper, garlic, leeks, and ginger. So these are often things I'll like have in my fridge, but I've never actually tried making kimchi on my own. Okay. Just like that. Put a little. And there you have it. This is. Did it get the sauce too? Did I miss that? Did you miss what? Did I miss the sauce? Oh yeah, yeah. So the sauce is right here. Ah. Like on. Oh that. yeah, I see it. Yeah. So that's your vegetarian sheet pan bibimbap. Delish. So I know it had a few more steps than before, but. I will say like, if you weren't talking while you were doing it and just like listening to a podcast or something, mm -hmm. you could actually do this quite quickly. And I'm gonna try to, because like I said, this is the first time I've ever made it. So <laughs> thanks for We love up. being guinea pigs, so. Yeah. yeah. Guinea pig audience. <laughs> yeah. I sent you this saying like, I wanted to make this. I thought I'd have time to like try it out beforehand. Didn't. And so I was like, I'm just gonna do it for the first time. No, and it looks great and yeah, it's so really easy to do too. So yeah. Well, obviously I'm gonna take a bite. So yeah, <laughs> now they like, yeah, do it. Uh, okay, here it is. So the best part is just like get, get that yolk. You have to like break the yolk. Yep, yolk is cooked perfectly, just so I like to see that. Nice and runny. Wanna get um it's gonna be hard to get like a little bit of there's just so many things in here. But this is the funny thing, right? Like the way to get everything in one bite is really to mix everything up. So I will do that. But here you can see I have some mushroom, I have some squash, I have eggs, I have scallion. Um, oh, I'm gonna get some kimchi and then I'm gonna try it. Oh my God. Okay. I'm gonna make zero changes to this recipe. No, well, I mean, you have so many great flavors going on in there. It's nice because it's like you've mm -hmm. made it where it's the, the egg is the protein and everything else is really light. So again, this is another great dish for summertime when you don't want to be eating too heavy. And mm -hmm. also, so yes, you can definitely mix these all in the bowl and then just eat. Absolutely. Yes. But I say like the nice thing is I feel like I'm always going to do this because I'm even going to eat this. Like, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's just like a crispy, crunchy thing. But the nice thing is like the summer squash that are in there have like sweetened a little bit. And the carrots have sweetened even more then the mushrooms haven't sweetened, right? So they've like deepened in flavor than if I were just to saute them or kind of like just cook them quickly in a pasta because they've turned into things like that. <laughs> it reminds you of a seven layer dip, yes. Oh, that's a great compliment. <laughs> I love seven layer dips. So yeah, that's it guys. I'm gonna try to, I'll probably like, 
make another bowl and try to kind of put things on there in a more pretty way. I'll take a picture and I can send it to you guys, but let me know if you try it. Yeah, so it's great. So much easier preparing it in traditional B-Man Bob stone dishes, which his spouse has used it. Claire's spouse has cooked it before. So yeah, this is a pretty, I mean, it's a very easy way to do it. Definitely a lot of your time is going to be mainly your vegetable prep. Exactly. And even there, I'm trying to think like, if you don't peel some of the vegetables, right, you may not have to peel the radishes. We not have to peel the carrots because sometimes after they cook, the skins just soften. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want them, you can always take them off at that point or just eat it because really the peels is where the peels are a lot, a lot of nutrients. nutrients. Yeah. So I might try that next time. Just try Cause I didn't peel the squash, for example. Um, but I might try it even, you know, not peeling the carrots and not just, any of those things you do is just makes it less work. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's it. Well, does anyone have any other questions at all? Um, and I've sent this, uh, Anyone who is on our email list, I have sent this recipe out to you. If you don't receive it, please let me know. I know some things have been popping into people's junk mail and spam mails. I hate being there, but I want to make sure I can get you guys what you need if you want to recreate these dishes on your own. Um, Sruthi, thank you so much. This was a lot I, of fun. Oh, yeah, this is so fun. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Thank you, Claire. That was very sweet of you to say. <laughs> yeah, thanks everyone. Yeah, thank you everyone. Everyone have a great evening. Have a great Monday and we will see you again soon. All right, see ya. Bye. Bye.